Hey guys, it's your girl Karen, aka Cake Baby K, and welcome back to my channel. I realized I didn't do that intro last time, and I didn't do my outro either, and I was like, what is up with me? I guess I've just been out of practice for too long, but buckle up because today is going to be a long video. I got a ton of requests to do longer content, which my talkative ass was very happy about. So buckle in because we're doing a full face makeup tutorial. I posted an Instagram story with this exact same beat and I had so many people compliment me and ask me for tutorials and compliment my skin. So we're gonna be talking about everything, product breakdowns, brushes that I use, makeup techniques that have truly changed my life. But before we start, I'm gonna ask you to like this video, subscribe, subscribe to the channel because that tells me whether or not I should be making more YouTube videos. If not, I'm just gonna stick to short form. Let's get started. First off, I love starting off with brows. I'm a brows before base type of girly. And the reason for that is that I typically use a clear brow gel. And if I were to do my base first, the clear brow gel tends to get all gunky and gross. I'm using the Benefit 24 hour brow setter and I just like to comb everything backwards and down to ensure every single brow hair is coated. They definitely look a little crazy at this stage, but give it a sec and then we're gonna comb them back out. And the reason I let it sit for a little bit is that so it can get a little bit tackier and the whole will be better. Another reason why I like to do the brow gel first is that so I can see where the sparse areas really are. And as a result of that, you're gonna use less of whatever brow pencil you have. Currently using the Ilia one to fill in my brows. This is my second one already. I love the formula. It's a perfect happy medium. It's not too hard to where it's going to irritate my dermatographia. It's also not too soft either to where the brows are just going to like slide off my oily skin. But like I said, I just filled in the sparse areas and it's just a very subtle difference, but they just look a lot more even. All right, the brows are finished. I'm gonna move on to the skin. I received so many compliments on my skin from that story, so let's dive into it. I actually didn't use a primer in that story, surprisingly, but I am gonna go in with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Skin prep is key whenever you're creating a glowy base. I personally have oily skin, and this actually works really great for my face, even though it is very moisturizing and nourishing. If you're looking for something similar from the drugstore, I highly, highly, highly recommend the Milani Supercharged Primer. This is what it looks like, and it gives you the most absolutely glowy base. I honestly think it's more glowy than this guy. Let's actually add some to the high points of the face. So freaking good. And judging by the way it smells, actually, I feel like these are dupes. I digress. Moving on to foundation. This has been my favorite foundation for the last over six months. I have not been able to stop using it. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. It has the thinnest consistency that just becomes one with your skin. Great natural finish. One pump is all you need and I just like to blend this in with a brush. Their shade range is incredible as well. NARS really knocks it out of the park with their shade ranges. Just so, so good. And look at that glow that's peeking through from the primer. All right, next I'm gonna do a little under eye color correcting. This is the Sigma Color Correcting Duo. This is the light to medium one and just look at the difference between my dark circles after I apply this to just one side. I just look so much more awake. However, we are not done after this first layer because this is not a concealer. It's just merely a color corrector. I'm gonna go in with my concealer, the Tower 28 Swipe Concealer. I have been raving about this ever since it came out. I have been using this since July and I have not been able to put it down. It's a serum concealer, so it's very hydrating and usually I'm not a huge fan of serum concealers because the coverage isn't there, but the coverage is giving with this concealer. I always like to let my concealer sit for a hot sec to kind of dry down a bit so it has a little bit more coverage. I'm also going to spray some setting spray on my face to kind of infuse everything with the staying power of this. This one I'm currently using is from LYS. It has a really nice natural finish. Once the setting spray has dried down on the skin, I'm going to go in and just blend out all the concealer. Also, if you're wondering about this brush, this is from IT Cosmetics. I love this one. I even have a backup right here. This is their Heavenly Luxe brush, and I just love how it blends everything out, especially this concealer side. It just makes blending so freaking easy. All right, now that everything is blended out, I'm gonna go in with another layer of setting spray. If you know me and have been watching my content on any platform, you know that I love to use setting spray in layers. It's so much better than just spraying one layer at the end. All right, moving on to bronzer. I'm using the LYS one. I just like to take it on the back of my hand to warm it up a bit. And for cream bronzers and contours, I love using this Morphe E63 brush. I get probably the most questions on this brush alone off of all my platforms. And this one is actually meant for foundation, but I just love how the shape makes it so easy to do any bronzer or contouring. Now you can take this bronzer stick straight to the face and blend it out from there, but I personally love just warming it up on the back of my hand. I found that it just gives a really nice effortless look. All right, this is what everything is looking like so far. I'm gonna spray another light layer of setting spray before we move on to the next step. I'm gonna start setting down areas of my face next. I'm gonna use the Sephora Collection setting powder. I've also been using this one non-stop for months. 
months and it's so affordable because it's from the Sephora collection. I'm taking this brush from Morphe. This is the M448 and just setting the under eyes along with the center of the face. So my forehead and my chin. Now you could bake here if you want, but I personally don't like to bake much anymore. Also make sure to get the upper lip and the smile lines because I get a lot of oil production there and the smile line always tends to crease. And since I don't bake anymore, I don't do that harsh line, but I do just set it very, very gently. It's kind of like carving it out, but without having that harsh line that's really hard to blend afterwards. So you can see it just makes a very, very subtle difference. I love using setting spray after I set down my face because if I'm looking a little bit too powdery or a little bit too matte, this is gonna bring it back to life. All right, next is my favorite part of any full face. We're doing blush. This one is from Dibs Beauty. Again, I'm taking it on the back of my hand. I could take it straight on the face, but I don't wanna disrupt all the work that I just did. And I found it's a lot more gentle if you do it on the back of your hand and just take a brush and then apply. This one is the Dibs Beauty Glow Tour in the shade Starlet. It's actually double-sided with the contour, but I actually hate the side. Taking the Bristles Beauty F. 09 RM brush. That is a mouthful. And I'm just going to pop this on the tops of the cheeks. This blush is so pretty because it's like a shimmer blush and it just gives you the most beautiful glow. And I'm a blush girly through and through. So we're going to be adding a lot of this. I like to start off with the apples of my cheeks and then just work my way up towards the temples and then a little bit towards the outer corner of the eye. Also like to add a little bit on the nose. And at this point, I like to assess if I've taken anything out too far. In my opinion, it looks a little bit droopy on the side so I'm just taking a little bit more setting powder and that same brush from before and just kind of cleaning that up a little bit okay I think it looks a lot better but just look at that glow I oof, so good I feel like with this blush I don't even need a highlight all right now we are moving on to the eyes I'm gonna use the Patrick Ta major dimensions one palette this is what it looks like it's so so gorgeous honestly I have not been able to put this palette down I'm gonna run a light brown shadow into the crease of my eyes and I'm doing that with a fluffy brush we are doing the easiest brown smoking eye known to man. All right, this is what we're looking like so far. I'm gonna deepen the lid with this maroony brown shade. And I like to take darker shadows on a flat blending brush because I just like to pat it into the lid. Patting it ensures that you're gonna have less fallout onto your under eyes. I'm gonna blend the edges back out with that fluffy blending brush from before. Now, if you're an eyeshadow beginner and you suck at blending, have no fear. We're just gonna pop a shimmer on top of this anyways. Oh, and don't forget the lower lash line. I'm just gonna take those same colors and just run it underneath my eyes. All right, now it's time for the fun part. I'm gonna dip into some shimmers. I love using this cranberry shade on the inner part of my lids. Like, just look at how pretty that is. And this is why I said before, it doesn't really matter if you're great at blending because the shimmer just covers majority of everything anyways. Next, I'm gonna take this brown shimmer shade and then pop that onto the outer part of my lids, just like that. And that's the whole eyeshadow portion. All right, this next step may be a little bit intimidating for majority of people, but I'm gonna tight line my eyes. Basically, I'm running a black liner on the upper waterline of my eyes. Now this is really close to the eyeball. So if you feel uncomfortable doing this step, please feel free to skip. It's not completely pertinent to the overall look. But for me, it adds a lot of depth to my eyes. I don't know if you can just tell just from looking at the camera. It definitely takes a lot of practice to be able to do this. All right, this last step is completely optional, but I like to add some false scara. These are some of my favorite false lashes. They come in clusters and they're actually supposed to go under your eyelashes. Now, if you naturally have great lashes, you could just curl them and do mascara or you can pop on a strip lash, but I personally have been loving these. So I'm gonna do some. Let me know if you guys want a dedicated video just on a false scara because there's definitely a learning curve to it, but I love them so freaking much. They have just completely changed the game for me. This is what they look like, and these are from the Petite Volume Wisps. They have a ton of different styles as well, so you can kind of customize to what you like. I'm gonna seal these really quickly, and I'm gonna do a Phantom Glossy Balm on the lips. These are my current obsession. Just look at that. And there you have it. That's it for this video. Please comment down below and tell me if you learned anything. I love being able to teach in any capacity. I really hope this video was helpful and don't forget to like comment subscribe thumbs up all that good good and i'll see you guys in my next one bye